الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ومولانا وحبيبنا وشفينا وطبيب قلوبنا محمد وآله وأزواجه وزريته أجمعين um, This is our last, uh, hopefully last session of this reading So we looked at the macroeconomic situation and we looked at the standard capitalist response and today we are going to inshallah look at islamic alternative so we now take up the hypothetical question hypothetical question of what an islamic revolutionary government may do in the unlikely event that it comes to power in 2023 in pakistan and the reason for obviously it's a hypothetical question because the probability of such uh, transformation is very low but um, this question and this uh, response needs to be thought out uh, for the reason which uh, which will make a, which will become clearer as we go up uh, as we go along okay number one so this is the islamic response to the current uh, macroeconomic situation or conundrum um, facing pakistan so immediately default on all official and commercial debt payments Uh, all commercial debt payments will be suspended and negotiation with the creditors for debt reduction and cancellation will be instituted or initiated. We would immediately and irrevoc irrevocably uh, cancel all interest payment obligations. as they are considered haram by both Islam and Christianity. Payments of principal amount, amount due will be related to export and, remit, and remittance receipts. So the repayment would be pegged with uh, export and their quantity. So there would be a in the interest of the um, donor countries to help Pakistan increase its export. Say 10% of export and receipts which each year will be allocated to payment of principal debts outstanding. Okay, so the, this is the first uh, response. Cancellation of or default on all official and commercial payments and the suspension and initiation of uh, negotiation for debt reduc reduction in cancellation and interest would be cancelled anyway because come under what they call odious debt anyway probably the whole debt is odious anyway number two we don't anticipate any serious impact on uh, economy of default Receipt of foreign capital markets and multinational sources will be suspended. But since they, these flows are used mainly for debt servicing, their termination will have no serious effect on the overall overall uh, investment level. Uh, receipt of foreign foreign capital markets and multinational sources will be suspended. Foreign portfolio investment has been negative or negligible for several years and FDI for foreign investment has been trivial comp component of gross national formation. We do not expect a termination of direct investment at the CEPC program. CPEC program, no country which has suspended debt payments in the past. Argentina, Sri Lanka, Lebanon, Ecuador, 
Ecuador, etc., has suffered an exclusion from export market, markets or been sus subjected to sanctions. We do not expect any negative impacts on our export due to debt default. It is also unlikely that sanctions will be imposed consequent to default. Sanctions are usually imposed for political reasons, not economic reasons. So the sanctions are a political tool and it should be um, dealt with politically, not economically. Pakistani debt is a minuscule proportion of global debt outstanding and its payment of its sus suspension will have no visible impact on global finances. Sanction may be imposed to punish Pakistan for installing Islami an Islamic regime, but sanction will have no serious impact on our economy. Sanction was imposed in 1998-99 in response to our nuclear explosion and all international capital flows were suspended, but the economy economy grew 5% that year. So actually, uh, sanctions have a positive impact, at least a positive correlation between sanctions and the economic growth. And it makes sense because once you have sanctions, then you are no longer obliged to follow their policy guidelines. CPI inflation was about 3% and gross dom dom domestic uh, capital formation was positive. Pakistan is able to withstand uh, such sanctions because Pakistani economy is overwhelm overwhelmingly domestically sourced. It is not the pro structurally uh, a strong uh, economy in the sense that the proportion of export import to the overall um, GDP is low or gross national product is low, which is a good thing. Number three, <clears throat> an Islamic revolutionary government will severe all links with global capital markets. Since global financial transactions are all riba and horror based, it will institute a managed fixed exchange rate regime. Managed fixed rate, sorry, managed fixed exchange rate regime. We will construct, we will contract we will not contract any foreign foreign loans in the form of bonds, cook or commercial or multinational source borrowings. We will impose strict capital controls on both current and financial accounts of the balance of payments and institute a system of foreign exchange and financial licensing. Sorry, yeah, and and import licensing. All foreign exchange inflows and outflows will be. channel through the government so so these are more like uh, slightly Keynesian style policies which were known in the capitalist world before this neoliberal um, because uh, before the neoliberal era Number four, we will immediately nationalize banks, including Islamic banks. Uh, because without nationalizing banks, you cannot uh, abolish riba, really. Because uh, most uh, non-print money in today's economy is created through um, credit. So uh, if you want to um, abolish riba in that in that institutional settings you have to nationalize banks and that's that will be our ishtihad in a sense. Um, obviously, <clears throat> you need banks, but you need banks which are not creating money through uh, riba-based uh, credit system. 
Okay, we immediately we will immediately nationalize banks, including Islamic banks and financial institutions, abolish the money and capital markets, and gradually substitute for the Pakistani rupee a new currency called the Islamic dinar. The issuance and the distribution of the Islamic dinar will be linked to not to foreign exchange reserve but to national physical national physical production. So. So we can't go back to minting dinars. So uh, this would be a shihad to, you know, appropriate those that those condition through linking this new dinar to the actual national physical production, national physical production requirements and demand. We will institute currency and credit planning. Number five, our main concern will be the enhancement of factor productivity. That's uh, increasing your techn technological capacity and production base. Also. We will promote investment and, and this sort of economic policies obviously are exactly opposite to the policies which are required by the dominance of financial markets and all that. We will promote investment in the capital goods, capital good industries and Capital goods industries, uh, defense production, IT, heavy machinery, electric, electrical steel, etc. These industry will be the industries will be nationalized because no, really no profit uh, uh, businessmen can have that sort of resources to run these huge companies. Uh, and obviously, it's, it's in the national interest as well. We will abolish the zamindari system, pseudo food feudal system, which we have, and confiscate all Harbi land without compensation and distribute them among the Haris and Mazaras. Muzaras. We will institute usher on agriculture, capital, and production, which is the zakat of agriculture. Agriculture produce, agriculture produce, agriculture based produce. Sorry. Seven, we will promote self employment and integrate the formal and informal sector of the economy. So, one reason formal and informal sector is uh, separated is because the state, which is uh, instituted and dominant on us uh, in our society is a uh, neo-colonial state. It's not a, a state which we have instituted. It's an imperialist sponsored and instituted state. So that's why instinctively the local uh, economy doesn't trust that state. But once we have a anti-imperialist uh, government, that problem will be solved. It should should be solved, or it should be one of its uh, one of its objective to solve this problem. Economic policy will be domestic demand and not export driven, and will seek to promote import substitution, especially in the food. Pharmaceutical, capital equipment, IT, and service sector because it is this de dependence on the uh, exports which uh, make you s in the uh, subservient to the foreign capital in the first place. We will ban the export of professional capital, doctors, engineer, management, professional IT workers from the country. This is something of a wish list uh, as the possibility of an Islamic revolutionary regime coming into power in 19, in 2023 or nil. Nevertheless, it is important. So that's the reason why we still need to have this wish list. That Islamic party representatives, uh, 30 or 35, which can be elected provided there is an electoral unity among the main Islamic parties in 2023 adopted revolutionary stance in the National Assembly and from the and from the opposition and from the opposition benches criticized the macroeconomic strategy of the neo-colonial state capitalist government from an Islamic revolutionary perspective 
and that will provide the basis for Islamic agitation against these uh, neo-colonial capitalist governments. In the present circumstances, it is particularly important that our representatives in parliament continuously and consistently present a case for immediately instituting a, a planned default, a halt to all borrowing from multilateral, bilateral and commercial market sources and the rejection of a new IMF stabilization program. We must endeavor to show that such a move undermines uh, genuine stabilization of the macroeconomy and that the stabilization that the IMF seeks to impose on Pakistan is a stabilization of the graveyard. Okay, so this was pretty good. And hopefully we have learned a few things from it. Uh, obviously for non-trained um, um, person, a person who is not trained in economics and economic policy, it might not be all clear, but, you know, it's important to try to understand these debates. And as we, you know, read this material, uh, more and more we'll be able to understand it more, hopefully. Okay, thank you.